Hi, it's Luke Bowman here. Welcome to my video lesson for Candle Power by the amazing Steve Vai. I'm sure you're as excited as I was last weekend when Steve released this song for his 60th birthday. Happy birthday, Steve, and thank you very much for this present. I absolutely love this track. It's fair to say that to me, Steve Vai is an absolute god. I was 14 years old when Eat Him and Smile was first released and it completely changed the way I looked at the guitar. I had personally heard nothing like it before. And all the way through my teenage years, he was definitely one of my biggest influences and I still love his music to this day. So it's a great honor for me to be able to do this lesson for his latest track and share it with you all. I'm gonna be looking at the intro to the piece, kind of like the first minute. So not the full song, there's gonna be no joint shifting in this lesson. It's an amazing technique and it's something I need to work on too. So maybe in the future we'll have a look at that. If you haven't heard the track yet, I have done a playthrough, which we'll look at in a moment. As always, there's a link to the PDF tab below, so please get yourself a copy of that. It'll be very helpful during the lesson. Also below are links to my Facebook and Instagram accounts. It'd be great to have you following me on there so I can keep you up to date with everything. There's also a link to a donations button. If you do enjoy the video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And also check out some of the other lessons that I've done. Let's have a look at the playback video and then we'll get straight into the lesson. Okay, so the first thing to say about this track is that there is no plectrum involved, so you're going to be using your fingers. This was part of Steve's challenge to himself to get out of his comfort zone. No whammy bar, no plectrum. So it is a great workout for your finger picking. If needed, if it's really not comfortable for you, you can use a pick, but you will need to use your other fingers in a kind of hybrid picking sense. But I'm going to assume we're not using a pick. Lots of great funky rhythms going on in this track. A lot of double stops, a lot of kind of sixth intervals some great chords and some fantastic licks. So there's so much to cover in a minute's worth of music, so I am going to take it quite quickly. Please just rewind and use the PDF as needed to cover things. But I'll try and go through each part in enough detail so you can see exactly what's happening. So we start with a two bar intro. Up here, 14th fret on your D string, 13th on your G, 14th on your B string. So starting off, we actually slide into it from a fret below, 13, 12, 13. And there's a pause or a scratch. I think the way I was playing this, the way I can see Steve in the video actually strumming it. So the scratches, you can either do a scratch with your, with your finger or just kind of mute the strings. So we do that slide twice and then immediately hit it again. So that first phrase, Bit of a strange rhythm that, just takes getting used to. And then there's a pause, and then we go down, 13th, 12th and 13th, down again to the 12, 11, 12, all on your D, G, B. So, another thing to think of here is the vibrato that you're using. Steve is using a lot of left hand vibrato on these chords. sing. A couple of scratches then into the next we start again and slide up to the 14th fret and then hit it twice. I would listen to the original for that to get the rhythm if you're not comfortable with it because it is slightly unusual. And then we end it with this little lick. Starting on the 11th fret of your B and E strings, sliding up to the 12th fret. Then 13th fret on your G string, 
14th fret on your D, slide down to the 12th. And then this part is not easy to play. Doesn't sound great slow, so we're kind of going from this chord here. So 9th fret on your D, 11th on your G, 12th on your B string, and sliding the whole thing down, 2 frets to 7, 9, and 10. I believe only Steve's only hitting the first note, the rest of this is sliding and pulling off. And then we're sliding that 10th fret down to the 9th fret. Off to the seventh fret on your G and B. So now that's quite fast when you're playing it at speed, and it's not easy to do, especially after this lick. Okay, so challenging start to the piece. Then we go straight in from there into the main riff. So this comes back quite a few times with lots of different variations going on, so it's hardly ever the same each time. Let's have a look at the first run through in bar three. So I'm starting, double stop, ninth on the G string, tenth on your B string. And then we're doing, so ninth fret on your G, bend it up, two frets to the F sharp, back down again, and then pull off to your seventh fret. And then ninth fret on your B string. So. It's not easy this part because it's very quick, but you need to try and get some definition in the notes there. So it's very much you're going for that kind of sound. Fingering wise, try and get to your second finger there on that ninth fret. And then you're adding the ninth fret on your B string because you're then going to slide up from the ninth to the eleventh on your D and then hit the tenth fret on your B string. Twelfth fret on your B string and back to the ninth on your D. Finishing off with a little slide from the ninth fret on your D and G up to the eleventh and back. Again, just hitting it once. Part of the magic of this song is the way that Steve's keeping so many notes ringing on. It sounds really fluid and, and wonderful. So try and keep notes ringing through as much as possible. bar. Now it's very difficult to play when you've just done the previous lick. You've got to think when you're coming down here, immediately you're going back to that. There's no break. Okay, next bar. That. So starting off very similar, just playing the 10th fret this time, that motif once more, play it with your 3rd finger and then with your 4th finger add the 9th fret on your B string, sliding down these 6 intervals, 7th fret, your D and B, to the 6th and 5th, a little rest and then 4 and 3, 2 and 2, B string and your open E. Like that. That's the whole bar. Next bar, starting exactly the same again. Do it with your second and your four, third fingers. And then sliding up again. So it's pretty much the same as the first, first time we did it. Seventh fret on your D, G, and B to the ninth fret. And then we're going into the next bar by playing an open D at the very end, which goes into. The 
open D, previous bar, hammer on to the fifth fret on your D string, open G, and then the third fret on your B string. Okay, have a G chord, F sharp here, down to the fourth fret on your D string, and slide it down to the open D. Like that, as so you're sliding down to the D at the same time as hitting. Open A string and then hammer on the 4th fret, 2nd fret on your D, 4th fret on your B, open D string, and 2nd fret on your G and B strings, lots of vibrato. Go back into the main motif. This time it starts with harmonics, natural harmonics at the fifth fret on your A and D strings plucked together, followed by that motif. So, natural harmonics, if you haven't done these before, you are very lightly resting your finger on the string, and as you pluck it, slightly pulling away. Can leave your finger there, but it can get a bit muted. I'm sure there's lots of great videos on YouTube on how to do natural harmonics, but there are a lot in this song, so it's, it's a good workout for you. That motif that we've played before, slide up, 9 to 11. This time, though, we're going to hit the top two strings at the 10th fret. And the 11th fret on your G string, followed by the 12th fret on your top two strings. So... D string, then finishing the bar, ninth fret on your D, G and B, hammer on the 11th and 10th frets on your D and B strings, and then back to the E chord there. So this one's a bit more complicated, you hit that harmonic, next bar, Starts with the 10th fret on your top two strings, followed by the same motif. Slide down to the 7th fret on your D and G, and then we're going to go down the same as we did earlier, but we're also adding a top note here. So we've got 6th fret on your D, 5th fret on your B, and also the 7th fret on your E. Just filling out this chord. Down two frets, four, three, five, and then two, two, four, pull off your second fret on the B string to the open, B, and then hit the second fret on your top E. So this is quite a complicated bar. Then we move up to the 14th fret now, top two strings, 14th fret, and then similar to the motif we were doing down here, we're going, so we're bending from the 13th fret, up one fret, back to the 13th, pull off to the 11th, and then hit the 14th fret on your D string. And then hitting 13 and 12 on your G and B. Sliding up to the 13th to the 14th fret. And then adding these top notes. So 14, 15, 14. Slide that up to 16, 17, 16. Get a brief rest to then move across to the A major chord up here. So 19 on your D string, 18 on your G, 17 on your B. So this bar. Just watch your fingering, you need to make sure you use your second finger at this point so you can slide up and still fret those two chords. Essentially a D major, 
to an E major. To an A major. So at the end of that bar, slide your 19th fret all the way down. And hit that. And then play that open D. We have that bar, which is exactly the same as what we played earlier. Except at the end, we're sliding up from the fourth to the fifth fret on your A string. Probably should have mentioned earlier both of these two bars are in 3 4. So there's a beat missing. So when you're counting it, you need to be careful of that. So we've gone. bar, we're hitting D major 7 chord. It's not particularly comfortable finger, fingering like this, but because you've gone like that, I believe you need to use your third finger. So up to the fifth fret on your A, fourth fret on your D, and then barring on the second fret on your G, B and E strings. Hold that for a while, Steve does quite a bit of nice harmonics. So you're holding that for almost two bars at the very end of that second bar. You are hitting barring at the 12th fret, top three strings, and then 12th fret on your bottom E string. Pulling off down to the U open E as we go into the next section. The next section is in a very different kind of style. It reminds me quite a bit of the track Sisters from Passion and Warfare with the kind of We start this. So slide down to the open E, and then hammer onto the third fret. Then your open D, second fret of your G string, up to the open D. Try and keep these ringing on as much as possible. That second fret here, this A, Steve kind of does pull this off quite quickly. Initially, but you can leave it ringing if it's easier. Then up to the open B. You can hammer on. Fourth fret on your open D. Up to the second fret of your B string. Ideally, you want to try and keep this open G from a few notes before ringing on. It gives it that really clashy sound. So. Sliding up the open D up to the fourth fret and hitting the open G. Down to the second fret and D again the open G, so it's the effect you're going for. Start finishing off again with the open E into the next bar. natural harmonics again, so we're hitting the 5th fret of your G, B and E strings, then the 12th fret, same 3 strings individually, and then hitting the 7th fret. These harmonics are all happening on your top 3 strings, so that bar. Bar finishes again with the open E, back up to the third fret. Exactly the same. And the fourth fret and the second fret on your D and B, exactly the same as that first bar. And this time we're sliding up from the second fret on your D and G. Back up to the fourth fret, and then back to the second fret. Again with a bit of vibrato if you can. There is a rest in the middle of there. E to the third fret again. Bar 16 starts exactly the same, but then we hold it at that point. So you really want to 
to keep that G string ringing through, sliding up to the 4th fret this time. It's not easy to keep that ringing through and not hit it with one of your fingers to, to mute it. And then that bar ends with an open A. Hammering on up to the 10th fret. And the next bar. So hammer on to the 10th fret on your A string, 12th fret of your D string, 10th fret of your B string, back to the 10th fret of your A. And a little tricky bit coming up here. Or something like that. So starting, fingering is very important for this bit again. Start with your third and fourth fingers on the 11th and 12th frets of your G and B strings. Slide that 12th fret down to your 8th fret. Put on your 7th fret and slide that up to the 11th. So it's a cool sounding lick and then we're adding 8th fret of your B, 9th fret of your auto B. Get a bit more clashing going on there. So fingering wise, because of the lick that comes before it, it needs to be your third finger. And then sliding up from the ninth fret to the eleventh fret on your D and G. And then back to the ninth fret with the rest in the middle. So that bar. off with some more natural harmonics. 12th fret on your top E, and then B and G, and my open D string. Rhythm wise you're holding this for a quarter note, 16th notes, quarter note, and then 5th fret, followed by the 7th fret on your B string, followed by the 5th fret on your D, and then 5th fret on your top E. So, hold bar, again leave those harmonics ringing out as much as you possibly can, and then we finish off, the same riff as earlier, to that point, but this time we're going to hit open E, Hammering on to the 17th fret on your D string, open G, 15th fret on your B, and 16th fret on your D, sliding down to the 12th. This is exactly the same lick as we played earlier, but an octave higher. And then we have open A, hammer on to the 16th fret on your A string, 14th fret on your D. 16th on your B, open D, and then hitting the 14th fret on your G, B, and E strings. Again, it's the same as we're doing down here. Put that octave higher. That full bar. I think is the coolest lick of this first section. Cool kind of pull off lick. So we're going to hit 14th fret on your G, 17th fret on your top E, pull off. And these are 30 second notes. So it's a quick pull off to the 14th fret and then 14th fret on your B string. There are the notes, rhythm wise. And then you're moving down to 14th and 12th frets. Pull off 14th fret on your top E to the 12th, 12th on your B. Do exactly the same down at the 12th and 10th frets. 10th and 8th frets. Ending up at the 9th and 7th frets. So it's quite a symmetrical kind of lick. The 
way Steve's playing it, when you're sliding, when you finish one lick, sliding down. So you're not hitting the notes again, but you are hearing that, that slide down ringing through. Takes a bit of practice to get used to the rhythm and the fingering for that, but it is a great lick once you get it up to speed. And then we're finishing up, sliding up to the ninth fret, from the top three strings, back to the seventh fret. Hit the open D, so slide from the second fret, all the way up to the ninth, and then slide back down to the seventh. And that's where I've ended it before it goes into the next section and all the joint shifting starts. That last lick. And that's it. A lot of stuff in there. I have gone through it pretty quickly, but it is technically pretty difficult to play a lot of this stuff, the fingerings that are going on. Um, so take your time with it, play it slowly to start off with, um, but have a lot of fun with it, and I hope you get something from the video. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.